Hey everybody, it's Bry Guy and Anders, and we're back, season two of the Neville Gossip Podcast. Really excited to be back with you guys. I know we took a break a little longer than we wanted to, but it's because we got a lot of good stuff going on, and you know we've been busy. But we want to come back and check in with you guys and uh, share some more stories. Uh, we're gonna try to have some guests this season and kind of talk to you about a lot of the stuff that we're seeing on the subs and that you guys are all talking about. So as always, with me is my wonderful and very insightful and uh, knowledgeable co-host, Anders. Anders, how are you? I'm great, and I'm excited to be talking to you and talking to everyone out there. And this is great. It's been uh, it's been too long. Yeah, it definitely has. I'm, I'm glad we're finally able to carve out some time to do this. And as always, we before we get on with you guys, we start kind of talking about what we're going to talk about and get the juices flowing. So I think we got a good episode for you tonight. Uh, We're going to talk to you about uh, who am I and who do I want to be? Because that's, that's, we found through some of our testing recently too, that's the thing that, that really makes the difference. We're going to talk tonight about how nobody else and what you think they think or any of that stuff matters. I've kind of been seeing this trend with, people on YouTube and Reddit and they're like, oh, how to change your SP. We figured it out. You don't. You change you. (laughs) Right, Anders? Yeah, that's definitely the key. It all comes from what's inside. It flows. The kingdom of heaven is within. Exactly. So you don't have to change them. I mean, you can change your stories about them, but the big thing that makes it stick is you changing the stories about you. What you say about you is what others will say about you. Well, especially if your story is that you won't be okay until other people are different. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a tough story to tell yourself. That's really tough. That's a tough story to think you can fix. Yeah, but if you tell yourself that you'll be okay, despite what the other person's doing or how the other person's behaving, well, that's uh, much more believable, I think. And that's going to be the second thing we're going to talk about tonight, which is fear and what a Mm -hmm. liar is. Absolutely. And how it comes into play with your belief. If you have fear about something, whether you want to admit it or not, you believe it. You're not worried about things you don't believe are possible. If you live in the United States and you know there's a spider in Australia that with one bite can kill you in three seconds... Are you going to wake up every day in the United States when the spiders in Australia and worry that today's (laughs) the day it's going to find you and bite you and you're going to die? No. In fact, you'll laugh that off. But if you're on a flight from Australia back to the U.S. and the guy next to you tells you he works with insects, you might be like, shit, what do you got in that case up there? (laughs) You know, (laughs) and then you very easily get bit by that spider, you know, and you're like, if only I hadn't worried about it. Damn it. You probably don't even have enough time to say that. But yeah, fear is a liar. So Absolutely. I can definitely talk about that. Yeah. And the last thing I want to just gently, quickly talk about is these hypotheticals because they go along with the fear. When we get scared, we create these hypotheticals. We have all these questions that we have to ask. Yes, I know I can do Neville. I know it works and I've seen it work. But and then you give us your reason why it's not going to work. And then you say things like, but what if the guy that wants her to knows Neville and he's better than me at it? Will he win? Well, yeah, that's <laughs> usually what happens. Whoever's better at it wins. But if you never told that story, nobody that was better at it than you would even show up to have to worry about it. It's discussing all these crazy hypotheticals that makes them happen or, or feeds into the fear. You're only doing that because you're afraid or you're looking for a way out. Well, what if there's somebody better for me than her? You can create that. But also, why do you need to create that? Make her the one that's the best for you. Well, it's interesting because, right, because these crazy hypotheticals, right, they're like the opposite of faith, right? Because you're believing in things which haven't even happened yet. But (laughs) why don't you spend your time believing in the fact that all these awesome things are going to happen to you later in your life? Why don't you spend Mm -hmm. your time believing that and... And thinking about like, wow, that's so amazing. Like, wow, like all this cool stuff could happen to me. Like it's happened to other people. Like, wow, I wonder what's going to happen to me. Like, I wonder what awesome things, who I'm going to meet, who I'm going to be awesome, what kind of cool job I'm going to have or cool opportunities or, 
you know, all those different things and, and just be open and available to that happening to you. Yeah. Why not? But the, the, a lot of these people, it's like, wait, I'm given a magic wand. I can make anything happen. Oh no. It's like Harry Potter. Nothing but bad things will happen to me. I'm cursed <laughs> with all this power. <laughs> Why? Why? Even if the bad thing comes at you, be like, bye, Voldemort. Boom. I mean, I don't remember Harry Potter that well, but isn't that kind of what happens at the end? Harry realizes he's the strong one. Mm-hmm. And says, you know, Invictus, I'm a right, whatever, or get out of here, a rightus. And Voldemort's like, no. And he realized the whole time, oh, my God. He was only powerful because I gave him the power. Yeah. And as uh, Norm MacDonald said, if, you, if you've read the Bible, you know how the story ends. And uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it's all about, you know, he was saved by his mother's love. And he was the guy who laid down his life for his friends, you know, and he comes out victorious in that. Yeah. Yeah. And again, too, there's the whole Jesus thing. He died. So stop telling yourself you don't deserve things and you're a shitty person because God already told you, yeah, bro, but I got you covered. And in case you didn't (laughs) believe it, I sent the thing I love more than anything that anybody usually loves more than anything. My only child. If that's not putting my balls on the chopping block for you to prove it, I don't know what is. Absolutely. And then my kid went along with it because he trusts me so much. Yeah. But by the way, we're one. Yeah. Yeah. Loving parents breed loving children. Exactly. You know, so if you become a child of God, you're going to become a loving person. Exactly. And that's the whole thing, because God yeah. wants a family and God is love. And so that's the children God wants is loving children. And, and I hate to break it to you guys, but I can't find anywhere in the Bible where God approaches somebody about this and they go, nope, and walk away. And God's like, OK, He's like, nope, mudslide. Now you're trapped. <laughs> We're going to talk about this, Moses. <laughs> you know? I don't want to do it. Oh, well, we could just put mud over your face now and you could just die. <laughs> it doesn't really matter because life doesn't. It's not what you think it is. Like you're still going to be around just in spirit form instead of body form. Like, it's just like God's just like, yeah, I, I got an answer to all this. I'm not worried about you doing it because you don't have a choice because I'm the creator. You know, but then he gives you the experience, the promises you get to experience being God, too, by creating. It's pretty amazing. And again, we're not talking about religion. We're talking about God. Anything that's man created, let's take out of it and just talk about God, because I think that's kind of the brilliance of the Bible is God's talking to you just about you and him. And he has all these wonderful stories to share with you but mm-hmm. again the crux of them is trust in me and the most amazing results happen absolutely let yeah. go of your fear and you can kill a giant you could be the smallest guy in the world but be the biggest giant slayer with god behind you it's kind of like Anders, you remember the 80s right all the bad sitcoms different strokes silver spoons all that stuff mm-hmm. and arnold little Arnold, yeah, was the little guy, right? And he was literally in real life a short dude. But Willis was his cool older brother. And so Arnold stands up to the gooch. Remember the gooch? (laughs) Arnold's nemesis? Yeah. And the gooch (laughs) wants to fight Arnold. We're like, fucking A, we finally also get to see who the gooch is. And behind (laughs) Arnold, when he's like, Arnold decides to get tough. He's like, I'm tired of being picked on. I'm going to stand up for myself, even if I get beat up. What Arnold doesn't realize is behind him, and they did this with Richie Cunningham and the Fonz, too. My other favorite one. <laughs> but Willis would be behind Arnold looking at the Gooch who he was much bigger than and like putting the finger across the throat like and going dead meat to the Gooch. And the Gooch is like, well, <laughs> I, I don't want to fight you now anyway. Or Fonzie would show up behind Richie Cunningham and he would be like, you know, I'm going to pound your face. And they'd be like, I don't want any trouble here. You know, and the guy had like a whole gang with him anyway. And it's like Fonzie, who's five foot seven. <laughs> I saw a, a video of Henry Winkler meeting Patrick Mahomes, and it was like, oh, hi, little boy. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> hello, little man. And he pat him on the head. You know, <laughs> I'm like, I don't think Patrick Mahomes or guys in the NFL would be like, oh, Fonzie, uh-oh, I'm running. <laughs> you know? But in Fonzie's world, he, he was going to kick your ass and get He's the a big girl. man on campus. <laughs> yeah. It was all belief. Who knew Fonzie was a giant slayer, you know? And Willis was like, you know. I'll kill a kid if I have to for my little brother, you know, I'll kill you, Gooch. But, you know, but again, 
that's you and God. God is your Willis. God is your Fonzie behind you. And the Absolutely. fear can see it. And that's why the fear attacks you because it doesn't want you to turn around and see that God's there. Yeah. Wants it you to needs focus you to on think the... you're alone. Yep. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, absolutely. You're right. Fear wants you to think you're alone. Fear wants you to think you don't have a relationship with God. Or fear wants you to think, you know, God God doesn't love you. God doesn't have your back. Or God's not there to get you through the circumstances. Um, and that wants you to be hopeless. You know? But see how that all goes back to who do you think you are, too? Mm -hmm. Because the yep. people that don't think God's behind them, I bet you would be living a life that's not the greatest. And again, even if you do, God's like, I don't care. I got that covered too. You've been forgiven for all your sins. But mm -hmm. let's be honest. When we are shitty, we don't think we deserve anything good. If we're yeah. shitty to other people, it's because we're angry. We're not getting what we want. So we're like, I'm going to show somebody else what I go through. And blah, 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 blah. Exactly. And it just becomes this never ending vicious circle. But when you do things the right way, even when it's hard, and Anders and I had lots of talks about this because that was one of the things I had to change. There's a freedom to it. And even when you don't get the big reward, you get this reward of like, yeah, but I'm a better person now. I passed exactly. that test. I am kind of worthy here. I am kind of deserving. And then based on how worthy and deserving you believe you are, that much, that many blessings come into you. But God's like, hey, why don't you remove that? completely and just say you're worthy of it all and let it all just come rushing in yeah well because part of what it is right is that you know, our our own righteousness is just um filthy rags but what god sees is he sees his son in us he sees christ it's christ within the hope of glory and mm -hmm. so when he looks at us he sees his son and then that's the worthiness. And then we allow when we allow that worthiness to flow through us. Um, we're out there being a light in, into the world and we're out there helping other people. We're blessing other people. And then, of course, yeah, of course, we're going to feel better about each other. But the amazing thing is that, you know, we already we just have to believe that we already have that right standing with God and that we don't have to work for it. Um, we just have to enjoy it, you know? Yeah. And the way you enjoy it is by, and I love this, I saw this in Bruce Almighty. I even loved it so much, I used it in my wedding vows. But in it, uh, you know, at the end of the movie, not to spoil it, but something happens to Bruce and he's up in heaven talking to God. And he's like, what do you want, son? What do you want? Who do you want to be? And what do you want for Grace, his girlfriend in the movie? And he's like, I don't know if I want her back, but he doesn't mean like he doesn't want her back. He goes, what I want for her more than anything is for her to see herself the way I see her mm -hmm. through your eyes mm -hmm. because she's perfect and she doesn't see that yeah. because God shows him his girlfriend and she's crying saying, please make me stop loving him. I love him so much. Please, I can't take it. It hurts. And she's in victim mode. She's like, God made me love this man. I can't stop loving him. And now I'm tortured. So Bruce, instead of being selfish, going, yes, keep believing that you need me and get codependent with me. Like a lot of you guys want to do when you're trying to change your SP. Bruce says, no, I want her to feel the love I feel now. I want her to see herself the way I see her now that I've been God and seen everybody through God's eyes. And that's perfect. And that's what a lot of you guys got to start doing. Which brings us to, luckily, the what I want to talk about first is, who are you? Who am I? Mm -hmm. Right now, you might be the person who is on the verge of a divorce, on the cusp of financial ruin, on the cusp of losing custody of your child, your life with a disease or an addiction. And it's okay to say that's who I am right now. But then that's the last time you say that because the next thing you need to do is say, who do I want to be? And get detailed, guys. Like I've shared before, 
I wanted to say, isn't it wonderful now that I'm the man I always wanted to be? And I would like say mm-hmm. it and be like, something's missing. So I said, well, how's God going to know? Which is stupid, right? Because God knows anyway. I don't have to make a list for God. But I felt this need to make a list. And it wasn't for God. It was for me. So that I didn't forget anything. And I wrote down who that guy was. Loving, uh, loving, kind, patient husband. Patient, loving father. Always there for my family. Always there for my friends. Unselfish. Giving. All of that. And then when I said that statement, I felt like, yes, I know what it is. I know what I'm asking to be. It's clear to everybody now who I am. And that's the secret to the money, the job, the person, the whatever. Is saying you're the person that has it because I deserve it. That's what gets it for you. Because you can say, I deserve it all day. But if you don't believe you deserve it, you don't get it. But if you say, I'm also this, this, and this, and that guy deserves it, and I'm him now, maybe today you don't feel like you're him, but watch if you keep saying it. Suddenly, you decide to do the things that make you that person. The situations will arise, and at first it'll seem like trouble, but you'll realize, no, this happened so that I could show myself I'm that guy. Like the other uh, Evan Almighty movie, he says to the wife, you know, when you ask God for courage, do you think just God just gives you courage in your heart and you're courageous? Or do you think God gives you a t- like an event to prove to yourself you're courageous? And that's what happens. Definitely don't call on it if you're not ready for it, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like I remember once saying, God, I'm not getting it. Slap me with the face with it and slap me in the face with it. And man, he did. I remember telling other people who were like, <laughs> you're crazy saying that. <laughs> he will. <laughs> <laughs> and stop with this need for signs because they're there anyway, but you don't get the signs until you start to do the work. So if you're waiting for a sign to do the work or proof that it works, if you need something to prove to you that you should go balls to the wall with it, give up. It's not going to work. You're not going to get it. But if you just go in with belief, those signs will not stop coming to you. Absolutely. Because that's, yeah, that's what a believer is, right, Anders? Absolutely. I mean, there's so much of Jesus talking about people who just are looking for signs and wonders and don't really believe. And <clears throat> and it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't work out. There are these, yeah, blessings which are available. But I think the key thing is, as we're talking about here, is just really knowing that God loves you. And, you know, having that relationship and that that's what it's all about. And once you realize that and then you realize then you have hope again, you know, that's that's the amazing thing. That's where things start to roll. And these other things will are they're symptoms, you know, they're not the the Mm -hmm. cause, you know. Yeah. And anything can be fixed. Like, I think it's hilarious that at one point I thought it's impossible to become rich when you're poor, impossible to get back together with somebody when they told you it's all. Meanwhile, this stuff happens to not a couple of people, but millions of people every single day. Absolutely. Tons of people are getting their dream jobs when they wake up tomorrow. Absolutely. Tons of people are getting their girlfriend back, their wife back, their marriage restored, their financial freedom, all of that. And a lot of you guys get close and you do well for a while and then you quit and stop because you're like, where is it? That's breaking your mental diet. Don't do that. Keep the faith. Keep believing. Every Bible story, when it's about someone believing in God, it gets really bad. And they're like, bet you don't believe now. And the person's like, (laughs) nope, I believe even more. All right, well, we'll throw you in a lion's den, see how much belief you have. And they wake up the next morning and the fucker's cuddling with them. (laughs) Yeah, that's how much belief he had. Oh, you're a a little man and you're going to go fight the greatest warrior ever? Oh, yeah. I bet you're scared now. Nope. Okay, you can pick from all kinds of weapons. Yeah, give me that rock over there. Give me that pebble and a slingshot. (laughs) What? 
That's belief. I got swallowed by a whale. Who cares? <laughs> my boat wasn't moving very fast anyway. My little wooden raft. <laughs> whale can swim super fast. You know? Yeah, he that's, that's an amazing story, Jonah. Yeah. That happened to him. And then God makes everything better, too. The story of water into wine is actually, I watched that show, The Chosen, and they go into it in much more detail. Have you seen that episode yet? No, no I haven't watched it. T- so tell me about the, your perspective on yeah, that story. So Jesus finds out about this wedding, and it's like, uh, uh, I think he's friends with like the bride or the groom, and the groom's like, look, man, my father-in-law is not really crazy about me. And he like kind of confides in Jesus that like it's important to his wife too, and he doesn't want to seem like a failure and all this stuff. But so Jesus goes to the wedding, and something with the vendor for the wine, uh, they don't bring enough or something. And back then, what they would do is they give the guests the g- really good wine for the first cup or two, so they would get a buzz, yeah. and then they would switch it out later with shittier wine, but you couldn't really taste it anyway because you were buzzed. So they run out of wine, and Jesus, of course, makes wine for them. And you got to think, if Jesus is making the wine, it's probably going to be the best wine you've ever had in your life. (laughs) So what kind of solves the first problem that he thinks he has is, I'm out of wine. This is going to be an embarrassment to my father-in-law. I used a bad vendor. He's going to just – another reason why he doesn't like me. Uh, There was this guy the father is trying – the father-in-law is trying to impress. And that man gets up to speak at the wedding and says, you know – I'm really impressed with this man and he really loves his family because he did something I have never seen before. Normally when I go to weddings, you guys give me your good wine for the first glass or two, and then I get the swill. But this man gave me what I thought was the good wine first, but then he brings out the most amazing wine I've ever had. And that's unlimited. (laughs) This man is a good father. This man knows how to treat a guest. This man is, is, is a good person. I mean, it's a little ridiculous because it's just we're talking wine, but it solves the guy's problems. I need more wine. And then my father-in-law now is like, oh my God, you made me a hero to this guy. And it's going to help my business. I wanted to do business with him and he's going to give me the agreement, whatever it is that happens with him. So when God yeah. comes in and fixes it, he fixes it. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Anders. No, absolutely. Well, one thing I think is funny about this story too is how uh, Jesus, you know, tells the servants, you know, just fill up the, the the jars with water. So they fill it up with water, and then he's like, "Okay, so now, uh, you know, draw some of out and give it to the master of the feast." So they do it, you know, and they don't they don't argue with him. <laughs> and they're probably like, "I don't even know," you know what I mean? Like, I, just, I don't. This doesn't make any sense. And then, uh, but then the master of the feast like tastes it and he's like, oh wow, this is wine, this is amazing, you know. Yeah. And and so it's uh, so funny um, because you know they just go along, right? Yeah. And I think that's that kind of relates to the imagination, right? They just they just go along. The servants will just go along with what God's commanding, you know what I mean? And they'll just play along, well, and then it. I think the reason they do that though is. Because they literally physically see Jesus and they've heard all the stories. But that's oh, what that, 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 that might be that might be part of it too. But I think it's just yeah. just from like a Neville Goddard perspective. I think it's like oh yeah, that's part of it, right? Is you know the servants will just go out and you know do the commands, you know, mm-hmm. and they aren't they don't really like question it, you know, um, or even have anything to say about it about the matter. And then the master's like all oh, like he doesn't know what he doesn't know where it came from. He doesn't know that water was drawn. You know, or that water was put in the in the jugs, and so he gets it. So I think that's that's like really cool. And I mean, I, and and he I just think, assumes, which is what yeah. Neville tells you. He just assumes that if Jesus is handing me a jug and I just asked him for a wine, why would he hand me a jug of water? There's going to be assumes, a delicious like, wine in there. Yeah, like the servants are handing out wine, so if they bring me some wine, then it must mm-hmm. be wine because that's what that's what they've always been handing out. So yeah, and then um, and there it is. And then I think it's also too part of it is. Uh, I mean, I think the bigger point, too, is just the way, you know, God blesses people as well, because people assume, oh, OK, mm-hmm. like, you know, the God will give me something good at first and then, like, my life will be terrible or whatever. Yeah. Don't um, do that. Or, you know, but instead in this story, it's like, oh, well, actually, God's saving the best for last. And, and you know, the in the story of the 
um, Israel and, and, and just people in general, people went through all these different, you know, crazy things, but now the, like the, the best thing has shown up, which is Jesus, yeah. you know, which is also cool. That's what you guys have to start doing. You have to start saying, bro, it's Jesus. I'm getting the best. He's coming through for me. Yeah, exactly. Things are going to get better. The guy literally you know, died for my sins. I don't think he's going to be like, no wine for you. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't have some money. You need to be poor. No. Exactly. Making Jesus an asshole. He's not. Yeah. He's your best friend. And on top of that, God lives inside of you. You don't have to go seek him. Exactly. You eat dinner, sleep, shower, everything with him. It's probably going to creep you out next time you masturbate, but, you know, <laughs> but I mean, it, he's, it doesn't stop. He's always there for you. He's always there for you. He's not going to disappoint you unless you assume he's going to disappoint you. You get what you believe, exactly. not what you want. And God is very clear on that. He tells you the double-minded man can expect to receive nothing because he's like, dude, I'm God. You've seen what I can do or at least heard about it. Why are you doubting? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important to figure out who you are now and who you want to be because who you are now is a doubter and who you want to be is a believer. So there we go. There's number one on your list. I am a believer. <laughs> Get a piece of paper. You don't have to do it right now, but when you have some free time, and make one of those T's. And on one side it says, who am I? And the other side is, who, who do I wanna be? And everything that's on the side, who am I? If it's not good, change it to what you wanna be. I'm a doubter, okay, I'm a believer. I'm poor, okay, I'm rich and abundant in all ways. I'm not loved, I have so much love, it's incredible. I'm bursting with love. Really go for it, too. Don't just be like, I'm loved. Be like, I am fucking loved. I got love <laughs> coming out of my ears, my nose, my eyes, my ass, everything. You name it. I'm shooting love everywhere. I'm like the little uh, unicorn guy in Trolls. I, I, I literally <laughs> fart and shit cupcakes. <laughs> right? My daughter loves that guy. The, the, the guy, every time he like farts or poops, it's like a cupcake, a delicious cupcake that comes out. You know? And I watch it. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Pop, Poppy's going to eat that thing? You know where that came from? But Poppy's like, it's delicious. And you're like, okay. You know, you got to think of it that way. Like you just are exuding happiness. And when anybody's in your presence, they're going to be like, oh, this is amazing. I, I love when that guy's around. You exactly. Know? And the way you believe that is by being like, I'm God. Who doesn't love God? Or if you're afraid of something, be like, well, then my fear is really going to be afraid of me. Because in the Bible, anytime God is in front of something evil, it trembles. It runs. It hides in the darkness. So what the hell are you running from? Why are you hiding? Why are you getting under the covers? You're God. Turn your light on and make it so bright it runs or blows up. Whatever. But ask, who am I now? What are my circumstances now? Well, right now, I got dumped. Great. Then say, who do I want to be? The person who nobody ever leaves. The person who, like, is loved by everybody. The person who, like, is irreplaceable. I'm irresistible. Because at one time, you were to this person. But at that time, you were not worried about if you were or were not irresistible to them. You were not worried if you were or were not irreplaceable. In fact, if somebody would have said, yeah, man, but what if she meets somebody else? Or you meet somebody, you're like, man, shut up with that. You have no idea. You guys all defend it. You have no idea what we felt. You're assuming a lot of stupid things. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not assuming things. You're pushing that shit out. I love when people tell me, you're assuming things and you don't even know me. I don't have to know you like physically to feel what you're pushing out. And also your words and your actions. If you're going to take to Reddit to write out how fucked you are, it's going to be a really hard sell to me that you believe in yourself and you believe in God. Yeah, because someone who does would never sit down and do that. That's why I tell you guys, don't make those stupid posts. Don't like those posts. You people liking those posts. I always hear from somebody later, you know, you told us not to like those posts. And I did. And I realized I was taking on those stories. And now that I don't do that, it doesn't happen to me anymore. Things are getting better. And some Good. of you I know are doing it to be smart asses. And I laugh because I'm like, man, they don't know what they're doing. They're just going to bring that shit back on them.
And it's not going to be funny then. I'm not going to laugh at you, but like I did tell you, don't do that. You're going to take on that story. God has, a, I think, the best sense of humor at all, of all. <laughs> right? Think about yeah. it. Everybody who would make fun of the fat kid in high school grows up to be what? Fat. <laughs> Right. Anybody who <laughs> like it was me, it's like it all comes back to them. God's got a great way of saying, like, you know, here, walk in his shoes and see how much you like it when somebody says that shit. Exactly. If you don't change your mindset and you keep staying stuck in it, this stuff will rebound back on you. But yeah, fortunately, if you change, you know, your story about who you are and who you want to be, and what you value, like all those things will change again, you know. Right. And that's how you decide who you want to be and get there is once you've decided who you want to be, you just scribble out that other side of who you are. Cut and it off I the paper and throw it away. I want to say something to you about who you want to be, because I think. Go a little deeper, because so, just to clarify something, for sure. people, some people might think. Well, oh, I mean, who I want to be? Okay, I want to be. And, but you could say all these things if you're just circumstances. Yeah. You know, like, oh, I'm, I'm loved, or I have a good job, or, or I have uh, the money. And then, so then might, that may be a little hard, but, but think about it. What's deeper than that, though? It's like, okay, well, are you lovable, right? Or do you value being lovable? Do you value being loving to other people? Well, if you are valuing being loving to other people and you are valuing being lovable then even if you haven't quite gotten there and you're not perfect all the time it's very believable to say that you value those things because you are valuing those things and you are yeah making that effort right so that's like kind of the deeper part is to go into there and then it's like oh actually yeah that's a good i already am that you know, and, you know, that's like the deeper thing. And so a lot of things people can say like, oh, you know, who you're right. A lot of times people will, will have an idea of what their identity is. They're like, oh, I'm like this or that. Um, and it's like, OK, well, that's how, you know, you've been labeled today. But if your heart's desire is really to be something else or isn't that really who you are? What your heart's heart's desire is? Um, isn't that like you know really who you are? Or in your heart's desire might even be that you you know have some bad traits or you have some negative um, desires of your own, but your your real desire is to is to be rid of those. Well, that's an even higher desire than what you might be tormented with at the moment, or you might be dealing with at the moment in terms of any types of fear or hopelessness or whatever. Um, but the fact that you um, know that those can be overcome, if you have hope that your current feelings um, can be overcome, well, that's a higher, that's even higher. So I think that can give us hope and encouragement to know that, okay, yeah, this isn't just pie in the sky. You know, this is, if that's really what is important to me, that's eventually going to overcome um, whatever it is that I'm struggling with today. So I hope that helps you guys. So I just want to take a moment to also say what just happened is proof that not only is God real, but he's working for you because, and this is why I love having Anders on, on this podcast with me too, is because sometimes I'm trying to get the, the message I want to talk about across and, and I, and I got so much I want to talk about and I miss like, kind of like, yeah, but how do you do that? And right there, I'm sure there are a bunch of you that are like, okay, bro, I get that, but like, you know, you wanted it to go deeper. And Anders took a moment and was like, and that was God. God was speaking through Anders to you to be like, okay, by the way, it's great that they said this, but this is also how you really do it and go deeper. And now you have the answer. So stop doubting that God's not there for you. Like he will always find someone to come in and do that. It was great what he just said. I, amazing. I, like, I should have said it too, but like, I, I'm, that's why I love having Anders on this podcast because we have each other's back and like, there's things that he understands sometimes better than me too. And he can, but it's true because what I was going to say, but not so well as he did is when you do get those things that you want, you become that person you want to be, it starts to go deeper, like with what he's talking about. But I think it's a great idea to start asking those questions now. 
you know, start saying, who do I want to be now? And like on the deeper level, because you're right. A lot of it, people are going to take this easy way out of like, I want to be wealthy. I want to be my own boss. I want to be loved. I want to be adored. I want to, but like, what does that really mean? A lot of people, Neville tells you, pick a scene that is emotionally like highly charged, not because your emotions matter. It doesn't matter what you feel. It matters what you believe. But you will believe that you live that moment if it's emotionally charged too, you know. Um, Absolutely, and, and often where your all body that stuff comes from. Can, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. And often your body can, uh, can't even like tell the difference between an imaginary scene and a real scene. So if you get or if you get really into something and, a, and something good, yeah, and you get really into something, you like think of like a bad memory, and you really like relive that bad memory, or you really relive oh, some yeah. sort of fear you have of like losing your job or whatever it is or how sad you'd be like your body will feel like those emotions and it'll become like a lived reality. You're, you're, you can't it'll be like really there, tell the difference yeah. between. Yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. you can't really tell. So that's, that's part of the whole Neville Goddard thing. So if you're living out of an imagined state of hope and things working out and, you know, the bridge of circumstances that sort of, or the bridge of incidents that you don't, you don't, you don't know, how these things all connect but god has a plan like if you're living out of that then you're gonna your body's gonna feel that hope you know and be open to seeing what's what's out there and that, that's another great thing too is like i thought at times i was so detailed in my description of what i want or wanted to be and then here comes god giving it to me and then i find out there's like a whole nother deeper like more emotionally fulfilling layer to it that I didn't even understand. But he's like, yeah, but here too, here you go. I'm just going to like, here's the icing on the cake. You know, here's your buttercream awesome. frosting, baby. You know, you got the cake. It's great. But wait do you taste the frosting, man? Like, I'm just going to make this so much better for you. <laughs> and, and the reason why we're talking about this is because I, you know, over revisiting some clients, because there were people I, I definitely want to have, on the podcast talking to us and stuff i started thinking about like what worked for them and what you know yeah what worked for me and and i kind of remembered like what really changed the game for me was not saying like oh they love me more than ever oh i'm irreplaceable i noticed that with my daughter with my dad i would say i'm a wonderful loving son i'm always there for my dad like you know my sisters too and other family members and my daughter especially though i would sit there and be like because i thought I was really hard on myself because I convinced myself I was a bad dad. And really, I wasn't a horrible dad. I just didn't like changing shit diapers. I was like one of those ridiculous dads in the YouTube videos. Like, <laughs> ugh, ugh, you know, and she throws I'm like, oh, you're going to have to clean it up. I can't. Ugh. Right. We're doing sleep training. And I'm like, if she throws up, you have to clean it up. Baby vomit doesn't really smell like anything, you know, but I was like, <laughs> I was so fucking melodramatic, you know, and even baby shit when they're super little you don't smell anything now when they're two watch out you know um you can smell that shit down the hall <laughs> but um but it was ridiculous but the funny thing okay. was when i started being a good dad i didn't smell it as much when it was the worst and when it wasn't that bad and i wasn't being the greatest dad i was like oh my god it's horrible you know and i remember my wife being like god you're such a puss man this is not bad at all <laughs> you know it's ridiculous <laughs> Get a hold of yourself. It's just poop. You know, like, you don't understand. I can't. Like, and I kept telling the story. I can't change diapers. The poop makes me involuntary gag. I never threw up. And I, I bet you started gagging. gagging. I did. I did because I told that story. <laughs> and I would tell it about yeah. everything. You don't understand. I've had a gag reflex since I was a kid. Uh, 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 you know, um, but it was just ridiculous. But once you change that story, you're going to. It might not even hit you at once. You're going to see that you change and turn into it unknowingly. And then people start saying it to you. Like, so as I was saying, I'm an amazing father. I started actually like thinking about things. And like, anytime something came out, like, well, I want to procrastinate. I'm really tired. The kid needs it right now, but she can wait five more minutes. I'd be like, no, get up, get her the cereal, get her whatever it is she wants. Be there. You want to feel sad right now? Your daughter's with you. Can't feel sad right now. Go give her lots of love, tickles, play with her, tea party, Barbies, whatever. And when I started doing that, I just started feeling like, man, I am a good dad. And then I had all these memories to call upon, and I could go right there, like Andrew said, in your emotions. 
And instead of having bad emotions about fights and reliving them and feeling back in that place, I relived the moments where I was like playing tea party with my daughter and looking at her face and going like, <laughs> that's the same smile her, her mom had when we would go to dinner on our anniversary. And she was just so excited. We finally were alone and celebrating together. I could get that same thing. And all I was saying was, I'm an amazing dad. And the kid's like, dad, do you know, like you are the best cook. You make my chicken nuggets and French fries crispy, but not burnt. Your tacos are better than grandma's tacos. Mommy uses weird gray meat. <laughs> you know, I guess <laughs> my wife is using uh, like turkey and stuff. And I was like, nah, you can't use ground turkey. for tacos. <laughs> we're only doing red meat once in a while. But like when we do it, we're going to do it right. You know, but then I was like, well, wait a minute. If I'm not saying anything to her, I'm not asking her, am I a good dad? I'm not trying to convince her I'm a good dad. I'm just right. believing I'm a good dad. And she shows up saying I'm a good dad. Why the hell wouldn't that happen with everybody else? Why exactly. wouldn't that happen with saying. my dad going like, oh, he's always going to ask for money. He's always this. He's, he, I'm worried when I die, he's not going to have his shit together. When I started saying my dad believes in me, trusts in me, I'm a great son. I'm there for them. I started doing that stuff and everybody's like, man, you're a really great person. So I said, why not try it with her? And that's when I got the best results saying I am a kind, loving husband. So say that now, say who you want to be, and then only say you're that person now. Don't go back to, I'm a kind, loving husband, but I did do this, and I did do that, and I didn't help with this, and I wasn't. No, you can't do that. That's double minus. Just be like, the past is the past, but now I am a kind, loving, patient husband. I'm a kind, loving, patient girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever. And make it about you and who you want to be. Not about like them needing to love you because that's that's coming from a place of neediness. Still, they love me more than ever. Absolutely. Yeah, you're not changing your SP. What you're doing is you're changing your belief about you, and that changes the world's belief about you. And then your SP changes. Then the guy who's going to hire you and pay you five hundred thousand sees you as the the good candidate because you said I'm a great candidate. I'm the best candidate. Robert Downey Jr. was dead ass broke. He says, you guys forget, when I went to my Iron Man audition, I wore my best shitty thrift store suit because everything got taken. I used all my stuff for drugs. So I wore my shittiest thrift store suit, and I made it a little, you know, kind of gaudy and because like, I knew I couldn't afford anything really expensive. And I rolled up in my Hyundai. Not Honda, Hyundai. At the time, Hyundais were not good cars. And went in and said, I'm not Tony Stark billionaire playboy philanthropist i'm robert downey jr billionaire playboy philanthropist and not only am i that i'm the only man that can play iron man and at first he <laughs> said i wish i could figure out what i did and tap into it all the time and then later i saw him do this interview with kids where he said he figured it out how he did it and he was trying to teach the kids how to do it and he's <laughs> saying don't worry about what you think you are Focus on what you want to be and then say you're that person already and you'll become that person. I'll try to find the interview because it was amazing. Yeah. That'd be but, great to watch. Yeah. But I mean, he really got it. He understood that he was calling it into existence. Eddie Murphy said, from the time I was 13, I said, I'm going to be a millionaire and a famous comedian and one of the greatest, like greater than Red Fox. That was like his idol. Mm -hmm. And he was greater than Richard Pryor. That was his idol. Uh, I mean, Eddie Murphy is amazing because he showed up. Yeah. At like, what? He wasn't even 20 years old, right? And he was already. Yeah, he was like, 20 amazing. years old in 48 hours. That is a <laughs> role that's so complicated that a 20 year old kid would be like, what? The backstory on that guy was like criminal, in jail, all this. Like, he, that character lived a lifetime. This kid hadn't lived anything. He was doing stand up at like 16. He was on SNL at 17. Yeah, he was already amazing. Not even 20 yeah. years old. He's incredible. The insight he had, the, the understanding he had of the world. But he said he heard it from, I think, Red Fox or Richard Pryor that like you got to call shit into existence. He tells people all the time, you want to be something, go be it. Say you are it now. Don't say what you are. Say what you want to be and only that and say you are it now and it'll happen. Could take three days, could take 10 years. With what he wanted to do, it was going to take time. Nobody literally becomes famous overnight. You might tell a joke. I guess now you could because the internet. But there was no internet back then that caught Eddie Murphy at a nightclub. And like, look at this clip of this funny guy. And then everybody's like, oh, my God, and starts going to your shows. But even then, it takes a while. You want a baby, it takes a while. But money, you can get today. 
love you can get today. It might not be full bloom love, but you could meet the person that falls in love with you and already feels they're going to fall in love with you today. Stop selling it short. It's God. He can't fail. She can't fail. They don't fail you. But you got to believe. And it's okay to acknowledge who you are now. I remember, I, I've never told this to anybody except for my wife. Before I met her, maybe six months, three months before I met her, I was really depressed. And I put on a lot of weight and I wasn't feeling good about myself. And I had this laptop and I opened it up and the camera was on. I didn't have my shirt on. And of course it was like the worst angle. So it looked like I was just this blah. And I was like, what the fuck happened to you, man? You used to have so much confidence, everything. The shit is really like this this cute act, you know, shit-eating grin thing. It's not working for you anymore. And I remember making a video. And she found the laptop later and was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. But in the video, I said, mm -hmm. I'm documenting this because this is the last night I'm going to be this bad. I'm acknowledging mm -hmm. that I got here, but this is the last night I'm going to be this bad. From now on, every day, I'm getting better and better and better. And I remember telling myself that. And I remember thinking, I'm going to die alone. I'll never find love. And then I was like, no, I'm going to find the most amazing love now. And look at you, man. You're getting, you're exercising every day. You're eating better. You're, you're, you're doing things to fix your situation. Like, And I would keep pumping myself up. And sure enough, around that time, I see this picture on Match.com. And my other friend... Booth was there with me, and I said, bro, this is crazy, but there's something about this profile. She didn't even really say a lot, but this picture, that smile, like, is this crazy? I think I'm going to marry this girl. And he's like, ah, oh, shut yeah. up, man, whatever, I get it. She's got a nice rack or whatever, you know, whatever he said. <laughs> and, uh, and then our other friend, John, and I meet up, and I tell John the same thing, and, he's, and, and I tell him I wrote to her, though, and I haven't heard back. And he's like, you know, man, like, stop saying that. Let's say she wrote back to you and like, this is it. He goes, I just got back from Brazil. They do this really cool thing where you blow into a balloon and at midnight you let the balloon down and what you blow in is all the bullshit, the bad stories, all that stuff. And it's crazy because like, again, <laughs> my one friend from high school and then I meet this girl and I meet you and then you and him also become friends. And then through you guys, I meet John. I meet all these people that played a, you know, a significant part in helping me figure out who the new me was. But so we go in the back of Central Park because we're like, nobody's going to be there right now. We let out the balloons and the last thing I scream is, and that beautiful girl from Match.com is going to write me back. <laughs> and so we got home and John's like, did you check? I was like, no. I said, I'll check in the morning, man. I'm not worried about it. And I check. And guys, it was not what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't like a hello. Oh, my God. Your pictures are so great. It was, dude, you sent me the same fucking email four times. And I was laughing because I'm like, of course. Why? You know, she's like, clearly you were just spamming the hell out of this website. So she thought what I was doing was I had a cut and paste email and I sent it to a bunch of girls and I wasn't even looking at the profile. So, no, I kept sending it to her four times. So I'm laughing and I'm like, oh, I got the perfect comeback. So I write back. I'm like, clearly you are having the same experience I am on the site. And because of that, you'd know. Why the hell am I going to write four separate emails trying to win you over if you don't respond to the first one? Why not just think maybe you didn't see it and keep sending it to you? Worst case scenario, you're going to at least write me back and tell me knock it off, which you did. And now I got your attention. <laughs> and she was like, oh, my God, that's kind of brilliant. I was like, right? I got you to talk to me. <laughs> and then I said, now I'm really going to charm you. Let's hop on DM. And then what I loved about her was she fucked with me back. Like I was like, you know, I kind of hate DMs. Like I like talking on the phone. I'm not like a texting guy. And she's a bit younger than me. So she was part of that texting. Me. But then she fucked with me and goes, well, I really want to get on the phone with you. But I'm nervous. And I go, why? She goes, because, uh, well, I probably shouldn't tell you this. But when a lot of men get on the phone with me, they accuse me of being a man. <laughs> and I'm like, what? And I'm like, what she didn't know was that actually happened to me. I had a guy. It's really funny. I think I sent it to you, the guy who like 
uh, catfishes somebody. He's like, well, so what? Maybe what happens is you get to know me and you fall in love with me. You don't care that I'm a man, you know? And then the guy starts seeing his head like that. Yeah, perfect. Planting together, going to Ikea together. Yeah. And he ends up like falling in love with him. But like, I was like, that shit really happened to me. This guy like was messaging me for months and I went to go meet him for dinner thinking it was a girl and it was him. And he's like, I figured if you fell in love with me, it wouldn't matter. I was like, it matters a lot to me. I'm not homophobic or anything, but I just, I don't care for the cock. Like, I don't really care about it. Yeah, you, you, one you're day not what I imagine. Like, yeah, you know what I imagine. Yeah, exactly. Um, but so she kind of freaked me out and I got on the phone and she even messed with me. She was like covering the phone a little bit and like, and she's like, what? and I was like, are you there? What, what's going on? hold on, wait. And she pretend like she was handing the phone to somebody and like saying, like, like, just talk to him. You know? And I was like, Oh my God, it's really a dude. He's trying to get a girl to talk to me. And she's like, no, I'm just fucking with you. And I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> I almost had a heart attack. I was like, I really like you. Like your pictures. Like I told my buddy, I like, I totally just spilled my guts. I was like, I told my buddy, I think I'm going to marry you. I was going to be really disappointed if you were a dude. And she started <laughs> laughing and she's like, Oh, you're already ready to marry me. I was like, all right, slow down, slow down. And like the whole thing, the whole time with her, I kept saying, oh my God, why did I just say that? I'm normally really smooth. I'm normally <laughs> really good at this part. But with her, I wasn't, but it was like, God knew, no, 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 don't do the bullshit with this one. And then on top of it, she wouldn't sleep with me right away. And I was like, okay, like maybe she is hotter than I realized she was. And like, she's wondering if I, uh, like, I was like, forget it. But I didn't care. Like, I just love spending time with her. And, you know, I'll share the full story with you guys one time uh, in the future. But right now, I'm not really ready to do it. But like, you know, um, but it was crazy. It worked out better than I thought. And it was like, you know, so it, but if I would have been like a lot of you guys in dramatic, I'd have been like, oh, I pissed her off. I got no shot with her now. <laughs> and none of this shit would be in existence right now. Kids wouldn't be here. Everything like none of it. If I would have just given up. But I was like, oh. Here's my opportunity. It'll work out. She messaged me back. There's a great sign. I was grateful for the fact that she was messaging me to yell at me. Stop spamming me with this stupid generic email. And she's like, what do we even have in common? I bet you didn't even read my profile. And I was like, <laughs> aha, I did. And I sent her something back and it was like, really like, and I believe in this stuff too. And I'm into manifest. And she was like, oh my God, I love this stuff. Have you read the secret yet? And I'm like, yes. She's like, I'm not very good at it, but I do believe in all this stuff. And then I tell her about conversations we've got. And then we have an all night conversation. The first date, I kind of told her I loved her without saying it. And she kind of figured it out and kind of went, but just so you know, me too. I did this little thing that my mom used to do. I was helping her fall asleep. I stayed the night at her place in the first date. And I was like, I'll help you fall asleep. I'll rub your back. And I was rubbing her back and I noticed her drifting off. So I did this thing that my mom used to do when we would drift off, instead of waking us up to say she loved us, she would do this little thing on our back. And that was like, we'd be like, I love you too, and fall asleep. And she goes, what was that? And I was like, oh, she's not supposed to wake up. I was like, don't, don't ask me that tonight. Ask me six months from now, which was dumb because she knew I was saying I love you. And she goes, okay. And then turns around, she goes, before I fall asleep, me too. Oh. I was like, and the next morning we woke up and she's like, I don't want to date anymore. I was like, oh, I thought we had a great date. She's like, no, I don't want to date anymore. Meaning I want to get off this fucking app. I want to date you, but I don't want us to do that. We're talking and we're dating it. Like, uh -uh. like something happened last night. I think you agree. So why don't we just go for it and be boyfriend and girlfriend? And you know me, normally I'd be like, fuck no. <laughs> but I was like, okay. And then she's like, can I announce it on Facebook? Cause I want to make sure you're serious about this. And I was like, go for it, you know, and who knew, but like, again, it works out better than you can imagine. And I didn't rely on the bullshit stories and like trying to play it cool and all that. I just was like very vulnerable and real. And she found it extremely charming. Oh. It set me apart from everybody else. And she was like, I've never really even been in love. This guy is the real deal. So much. So I'm going to wake up tomorrow and be like, be my boyfriend. It wasn't a hard sell, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you look at her and you're like, hell yeah. <laughs> but again, it's, it's, it's always going to work out better than you think. God's always going to come through for you. But again, it all started with that night. Me saying, I'm not going to be this guy anymore. I'm not going to yeah. die alone. I'm not going to be fucking dramatic. anymore." And then telling myself every day, everything's getting better and better. 
thanking God more and more. And then he gives me the best gift of all, which led to all the other best things, even <laughs> divorce, because it changes you. But in a good way, if you make it be a good thing. So stop being so fucking dramatic. Start saying who you want to be, but say you are that now and don't look back. Don't be Lot's wife. I've talked a lot now, so I'm going to let Anders jump in and say some stuff because <laughs> you guys always talk <laughs> over the podcast. <laughs> I just well, get really excited. No, I think this is really important. And I mean, one of the things which was, I mean, I just love that story about how you know, you declare that. And it was interesting. I was listening to a, like a presentation the other day. And the guy was talking about this. It was actually a, this, the sales technique the guy was talking about. He was talking about how people really want to live up to what they declare. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, wow, that's really interesting. Because I kind of noticed that. But then you've just been bringing it up like this whole last hour you know mm-hmm. and there you were there you were declaring this you know on tape and everything that's like really uh really cool so i thought that was really interesting and then another thing which might encourage people is you know believing that you know if you believe you know you're the person who can Maybe there's some things which you find challenging right now. But if you believe you're the person who can acquire those skills, you know, um, I think that can also be encouraging, right? Hey, can you repeat that? Because we kind of lost the connection there for a second. Sure. Well, I was saying, imagine believing that you're the person who can acquire those skills, you know? Or, Or this is interesting, too, like something I think about. Or, which would kind of encourage me was <clears throat> I remember I learned how to ski when I was older and in my 30s and you know I was intimidated by it and I went with my friend and my friend was like whoa um because I just was going to going to hang out with him and I thought he was just gonna go ski he was like no no you gotta go ski too I mean you go here he t- took me to the place and like no you gotta go rent the skis I'm like, damn it I don't know how to ski <laughs> I'm doing this and he's like ah, don't don't worry about this go uh you know, take take the class. So I'm, I'm like down there on like the the slope. You know, basically the lowest lowest part of the mountain. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like just two feet from the parking lot. And they're like, okay, yeah, now you're gonna take your class. And it's like, oh, okay. And I'm there with like it's like me and like you know 20 other like little kids who are all like two feet tall. And it's like the cutest yeah. thing because you know like little kids ski and they like fall down and then they like bounce back right back up like little bunnies. They do, you know? yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm like so tall. It's like it's it's a long way down um, <laughs> when I tip over. So it was like a really funny experience because I had a, you know, I, I never skied. I didn't, I didn't know uh, how to do any of this. I was definitely intimidated. And wow, I spent, I spent like a whole week, um, you know, learning, and you know, I was terrible at it. I was not a quick study. But, um, you know, but at the end of it, though, I was able to actually, you know, do a little skiing and, you know, go up a, a, a chairlift and run some greens or whatever. And not really mm-hmm. well. But then what happened was I ended up going skiing like probably at least once a, a, once a year for weeks. I think some years maybe and I went two different weeks and I just, you know, kept at it, you know, and um, I guess I just you know, believed it was possible for me to, to learn. And I just kind of, instead of allowing myself to, you know, beat myself up about like how I'm terrible at it, I was just like, oh, okay, I guess I'm just going to like allow myself to get better. And it's just going to take some time and I'll just kind of like, whatever, I just won't like, you know, push myself or beat myself up about it. And, and you know, I got pretty good. So, I mean, I remember at one point, um, you know, like I went to Vail with my friend and we were skiing in like the black diamonds, you know, and, it was like not a problem you know i was able to do it, it wasn't a, a big thing and then although I, I will admit i did go to jackson hole and that that, that is a hard mountain <laughs> i'm still I'm, I'm still not that good at skiing but um yeah so i think that was like a really encouraging thing for me 
And I always look back at that, that, yeah, you know, it's, it's okay. It's, you know, I start out at something I'm, I'm terrible at it, but you know, I just, um, committed to, you know, learning the week I was there. And then I was like, oh, this is actually kind of cool. I'm just going to keep doing that. And I was able to do that several years in a row and I got, I got pretty good. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of that has been a few years since I've, I've gone skiing, but, uh, Right. Last time I went, I had been a little bit too. And, you know, I was still able to do fine and it's kind of like riding a bike. And so I think that was like yeah. really encouraging. So I think just it's like, yeah, if you're like, OK, who do I want to be? And one of those things is, OK, well, I'm going to, you know, have, you know, believe in myself, believe in, in the future and believe that I can and can learn or change or learn new habits or learn learn new skills. And you know, I can in that because it's important to me. Um, and that's what I value, then, yeah, you'll see that change. And so that'll help you get past the, what can be the challenge of, okay, well, yeah, I'm not actually necessarily that good or whatever it is. But, and, you know, I, I've seen people who've, there's also encouraging, like, you know, I've seen people who've done like career changes, you know, and like I know a couple of people who, because they thought it would be good for them. Um, one of the guys had a successful career, but more in like, TV and film, but he didn't want to be out like uh, on set and location all the time because he was, you know, having kids. And then I knew another guy who, you know, wasn't that successful, but they both made a switch into uh, computer programming because um, they that's what they wanted to do. And they, uh, you know, were able to do it and they applied themselves and and you know developed those new skills. And it took time. You know, they spent. Um, we had to definitely one of them. In fact, we definitely had to push and be like, "Hey, let's like, yeah, start <laughs> applying for jobs and stuff." Because you know, you you actually do have some skills now. Um, so 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 they would hire you more than what you're getting paid because you're not you know you don't have that. He was the guy who wasn't working in TV production. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I think this stuff like that's encouraging and knowing that you know if you know you can hold on to that in your imagination, um, you can see that you know, manifest in your life and you can see that develop in your life. So I think that's, that's like really encouraging for people. The other great thing you did, which also helps with your belief is you persisted in it. You kept going back every year. Yeah. yeah and you were exactly. disciplined when you got there, you're like, I'm going to make sure that I make the most of this time skiing. And then your belief got better. Wow. I conquered that mountain, that mountain, that mountain. And you're also okay with saying, hey, look, Jackson holds tough, but, you know, I feel like if I got back out there all the time, I'd, I'd get that too. Yeah, like if he had reached that level if I, had, if I had the time, exactly. Yeah. And that's what you have to do. You have to stay focused, stay disciplined, and just keep doing it and not being like, but where is it and when is it? Because then you said, oh, I still don't believe. And you did it for you. You didn't do it because, like, you wanted to, like, you know, impress your friends. You just did it because you wanted to be that guy. So many people are going for the SP or the job or the money because they're like, I just, I, I need it. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing it for that versus for me. You know, if you're a sinner, it's a great thing because Jesus told you I'm here for you. And on top of that, man, God loves making an asshole look like a great person because it shows everybody like how wonderful he is. Like, look, I can make the, the guy you thought was least likely to be the hero be the biggest hero of all. And we love those damn stories, the underdog stories, the reluctant hero story. We love them to the point where I think when we take this journey, we kind of try to be a Luke Skywalker and then we stay dramatic mm -hmm. instead of just being like, well, it's a fucking movie at the end of the day. And they had to make it dramatic to entertain me because if I heard the real story, I'd be like, that's boring. Not that Star Wars is a real story, but I, I always say the vow. The vow is like Channing Tatum, Rachel McAdams at the peak of their hotness. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I love you. And he's got the hair and the chiseled body. He's saying it to her in like gray sweatpants with no shirt on. And he's eating cereal. Like, oh, God, he's so And she's like, her hair is lightly tussled. And she's in a sweatshirt where it falls over her shoulder. And you're like, God damn, she's hot. You know, but the true story is it was two very unattractive people that got in an accident. The wife forgot about him. And he was like, I'm not going to find anybody else to marry my ugly ass. So I'm just going to kind of believe that, you know, <laughs> and he made her fall in love with him all over again. There was no ex-fiance. Her parents weren't really wealthy. None of that shit was real. But if they told you the real story, you'd be like, why am I watching this? Why, why am I watching? Like, OK, dude, get over it. Your ugly wife again. You're, you're ugly, too. Like, I mean, I don't know, man. Shit happens. 
but we love the drama of it in the end where we think they're not going to get back together. Oh my God, what's going on? Please don't end. And then you see him and it's a snowy night. And Channing Tatum is in like this big coat with a white turtleneck underneath. He looks like he's in a Christmas music video. And she's in her white coat and all this. And she's like, do you want to get a hot chocolate like you said we used to? And he's like, yeah. And then you, all it is is it pans out. And you're like, oh, my God, they're about to fall in love all over again. She said to him, I realized who I used to be. I guess I'm turning back into that person again. He's already that guy. They're going to fall in love. Really, it was just like, all right, if you're my husband, I guess you're my husband. And it's going to be a pain in the ass to separate that whole thing. And I guess, you know, if you're my wife, I'm supposed to stay with you through thick and thin. So I'll just forget that you don't remember any fucking thing about me ever and just fall in love with you all over again. Me as a husband, I would have been like, holy shit, do you get the gift I just had? Every fuck up I ever made, she will not remember. I'm starting (laughs) clean slate and I know what mistakes really got me in trouble. I'll never do them again. It could not go better. (laughs) Right. I'll never, I'll, I'll, anytime we fight moving forward, I'll be like, remember when we first met, you did this. No, she forgot. You know, <laughs> so I guess it's really how you look at it. Like, maybe that's how that guy looked at it. Like, well, you know, I was, really, we'd fight a lot and I did a lot, a lot of stupid shit. But wait, she didn't remember any of it. OK, yeah, I'm totally fine with being nice because it's not going to get thrown back in my face anymore. You know, it's like, right. I don't know. But but it's all it's this drama. It. Yeah, it's all this drama that we want. And it's yeah, I think that's part of the it's thing, right? I wonder with some of the people out there. Yeah, some of us probably are are like kind of looking for drama and are looking for. I mean, hey, some people definitely have some real challenges in life with with relationships and, and people in their lives. But I do feel like in in some circumstances, yeah, a lot of people like to look at the drama instead of looking out with with thankfulness as to where they are and what they do have <clears throat> and the relationships they do have um out there and and the fact that i mean you know so okay if you're you're listening to this um you know you <laughs> you're pretty it's, hey at least you got a, a phone or a computer yeah <laughs> i mean that that's yeah. pretty amazing it's connected to the internet like i mean I, it's I, true i, I, I don't honestly, know how but i, I, I see I, homeless I, people with phones now and i'm like how <laughs> exactly and i'm like i'm like you know, I, I've chats with like actually my buddy I was talking about who used to work the film industry. We kind of like kind of laughingly like talk about like you know like how far back in time would we really want to live? Would we really want to live like back before the internet? Like would we really like you know and all these other like conveniences yeah. we have like even if we had a lot of money like a lot of money would it really really be worth it? Kind of as much as crazy as things are now. So yeah. like you know if you're even listening to this uh, to us, you're probably in a pretty good situation relative to most of human history. So. But I think it's too in the Bible. I mean, um, you know, I think Paul especially talks about, you know, talking about like praise and thanksgiving and and, and come to the the Lord from that place. And also actually the that that's um, thanksgiving and praise is actually the sacrifice that God's looking for. That's the um, that's that's the um, that's the sweet aroma um, to God is is hearing that and then and being grateful. And then, but I also think. You know, and I, I, but it's hard. I mean, I've been in that circumstance years ago. I remember going to a party where I just felt like my finances were not going well. This was quite a few years ago, and I was feeling really hard. And it was just really hard. I kind of knew, like, yeah, I just got to be thankful and, and all that. But I was feeling like everything just kind of felt like ash. Like it was really hard to to be thankful um because it just felt things felt, felt kind of hopeless um and so that is i acknowledge it's it's tough but i also in retrospect know that i put myself through a lot because you know even things bad things did happen and i did run out of money like you know things did still work out somehow and uh you know i was um i think i put myself through a lot of grief over the years and caused myself a lot of pain over the years um you know because it is fear, a lot of it was fear like okay well, what's this worst case scenario happens, like what is going to happen, you know, and then, um, you know, things, you know, worked out, you know, things are, things are okay. Um, yeah. So I think that's, um, hope that encourages you guys, um, to, to know that. So again, what you guys want to do is go back and look at who you are now and make a list of that and then be like, okay, on this list, what don't I want anymore? 
and then make a new list of who you want to be and forget who you are now. Just be like, who do I want to be now? And then from there, you're going to cross out all the crap you are now that you don't like, keep the stuff you do like, and then start telling yourself today with no proof of it, because that's what belief is, that you are that person now and never look back. No matter how hard it is, you got to persist. And persisting and being disciplined like that is a sacrifice. But again, like Andrew said, God loves that. And he's like, that's belief. My boy, my girl, she's believing now. Shazam, it's done. Look, people will start telling you you're that person. People will notice the change in you. You won't stop hearing people say stuff like that to you. But you also won't care if people say it to you anymore. A lot of you guys do this stuff because you like need a pat on the back. Just mm. do it for you. Do it for you. I had one guy for years. He was always trying to oversell me on him. And I finally said, hey, man, it's cool. I'm already your friend. <laughs> I already <laughs> like you. It's cool. You know, and I got that it's funny that, that, guy that I did that with. You know, I would try to oversell yeah. myself. And he'd be like, bro, it's cool. I'm already your friend. You're actually a pretty funny, fun guy to hang out with. I just don't understand why you don't see that and why you're always trying to impress everybody. Yep. You know? And it, it was yeah. nuts. Yeah. But do it for you. Because whether they come back or not, if you do it for you, you end up awesome. But you also end up becoming the person that was irresistible to them times a thousand. Because you get back to that place, but this time you're also, you got none of the other bullshit that you had, and boy, do you look really good. <laughs> you look super appetizing. And most other people aren't doing this, so they're like, oh, God, like, he really, she really stands out now. <laughs> Did I make a mistake? Truth is, they always come back to find out if they made a mistake. And don't worry about how they're going to hear it. I don't know. I can't explain it, but somehow God finds a way to show them. I even heard that from a dating coach when I was first starting everything. I hadn't heard about Neville. He's like, fix everything they said was wrong with you because it probably is because you're a little messed up and do it for you. Do it whether they come back or not. But that way, if they don't come back, fine. But the next person you meet, you're good for and your relationship will be successful or They'll see it, and he goes, and this is the crazy part. I can't explain it, but, but when you really do it and you really do it for you, somehow they always find out, especially in today's day and age, man. You can find anything out about anybody. A lot of the people on the Reddit, they're stalking people. They're like <laughs> – like I had one client tell me, like, I'm blocked from everything except for Spotify, and I got on Spotify, and I noticed he made this list, and I don't know who he sent it to, or he mm. sent it to some girl. or I'm like – Holy super stalker. <laughs> I didn't even know you could get that information. I got my ass off of Spotify that day, though. I was like, I'm not going to get on Spotify anymore. You know, <laughs> it was crazy, though. Like, I'll take anything, including your Spotify lists. <laughs> Sweetie, you need to work on you. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, would you, like, and I, I, I say to them, I'm like, how would you feel if he found out you were stalking his Spotify account? <clears throat> right. She's like, oh my God, I'd be so embarrassed. I was like, then don't do it. Because yeah. if there's a way for you to see what he's doing, there's probably a way for him to see what you're doing. That's true. And then he's going to send you some nasty email and you're going to believe it's even harder to get back together with him. Ooh. Stop doing things that are going to make it harder for you to believe. I get it. You're impatient. You want it now, but don't go blow it all up because you're pouting and didn't get it today. And then make it seem like, oh, my God, now I'm even further from what I want. Just keep trusting. Keep saying it's done. It's good. I'm good. God has me. And then watch how that's what happens. All right. So I think we touched on what we wanted to talk about tonight. Absolutely. Anders, do you have any final thoughts? Um, no, this is good. Um. You know, I'm going to add something, though. I had a um, 
Yeah, that's, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give a, a, a Bible verse about fear. Sure. This is from from one John four, and I I really love one John, and I definitely highly recommend it to to anyone. If you haven't read it recently, read all of it, especially one John four. But this is from one John four eighteen to twenty one. So John says there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. For fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he, which is to say God, first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, whoever loves God must also love his brother. So I think that's uh, beautiful. And there's just so much there. And just to remind you guys that, that God loves you and his commandments are very simple, which are to love God and love one another. And hey, um, can't love your brother who you have seen. Uh, how are you going to love God who you haven't seen? Um, so. and, and there's some of you out here right now that are hearing that. And that's your solution. That's that's your answer right there. You know, like let it all go and love God, love yourself, love everybody. Exactly. And yet and you're you're included in that too. Yeah, you should you no, should love no, yourself. I, I was yeah, I, I don't want to get too personal, but there was something that's been on my mind. And I was like, Well, there's no answer that I asked for. You know? <laughs> And I'm like, as soon as you said the part where he's like, if you don't love your brother, you don't love God. I'm like, all right, I love him. I love him. I love him a lot because I love God. I'll let it all go. I love him. You know, so it was good that I, that's what I'm saying. God fixes everything, tells you the answers, all that stuff. So, yeah. So I just want to let you guys know, you know, that's read that. Um, you know, there's, there's nothing to worry about. And, you know, Jesus says we should be anxious for nothing. And, you know, God's going to get you through these circumstances. And God's within you. Um, you know, remember Edward Goddard talked about imagination. That's God. So get in there. Um, and God's there. The imagination's there. And just get in there and really live, like, from the end, from just really feel it, just be there in you being that person who you are. And I sincerely believe that, you know, you want to be that person who is a light unto the world, who is loving towards other people. And instead of living out of fear of how things aren't working out for you, or you aren't getting what you want, or you're going to be in bad shape, um, just be out there and available to help those people who are hurting um, and also know that God is loving you and, you know, he doesn't want you to keep being critting. Um, so I hope that helps. And, and I just want to add one little kick in the balls to all the excuse makers out there. <laughs> I hear a lot from people on this sub. I can't visualize. I can't that. Um, you can because you 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 in one breath tell me you can't visualize the good thing. But man, did you visualize the bad thing and then yes. you come up with all these new visualizations of what they're doing without you. You can. You manifested the bad thing by seeing it in your head first, by talking it to an exi into existence. There's no like you manifest every second of the day. So everything that happened to you is a manifestation. So if it's bad, you manifested something bad by being in the bad state. And, Guys, and why manifest your person? Yeah. And why you manifest your your imaginary tonight? situations which aren't even real, but are going to feel real, are going to make you feel miserable? Why manifest yeah. those in your imagination? And then also, gonna, why have those like the, the self talk, right? Where you're having those yeah. those arguments with, you know, imaginary, with the imaginary versions of people you know. <laughs> your imaginary like, why, why do that? You know, yeah, yeah your imaginary friends and enemies, um, you know, don't, don't go through all that. You know, instead, have loving conversations about them or with them or have loving conversations with God. Um, ask God to believe that God's like talking to you or hearing you or loving you or whatever it is like, or have imagine how awesome it is, how things are, are working out or how yeah. you're 
in a trial, but you know, you're going to be blessing people and encouraging other people by the fact that, you know, when the going gets tough, you know, you get going and you get going in love and being um, a blessing to other people. And um, that's going to, you'll be that light into the world. So that's, yeah. Yeah. And it's, a, totally it's just a story too, that you can't imagine it. Yeah. You don't have to even imagine it. You can hear a conversation in your head. You can write down a story mm-hmm. in your head. I find it hard. The people say there's this thing where they can't visualize anything. I'm like, how can you function as a person then? What happens when you encounter a problem? How can you problem solve if you can't imagine a solution? It doesn't, I don't know. I think it's like one of those things, like, you know, the people who are really into like feeling bad about their brain, they're all about this attachment style shit too. And it's like, no, 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 because you say they're that style, they're that style. And I I don't want to take anything away from people who are in actual abusive relationships or with narcissists and all that. But there is evidence from what I've seen that there are times when people are labeled a narcissist from their person. And then the person talks to people they knew and they're like, wow, that's really weird. I never knew Jacob was fucking crazy like that. I never experienced that with him. Right. Like, Sometimes for all we, we know, Johnny Depp was an asshole with Amber Heard. Yeah, but he wasn't an asshole with everybody else because they were like, it's Johnny Depp. He's the nicest dude on the planet. You know? <laughs> but they do have videos of him slamming doors and yelling at her and shit. So it wasn't like, you know, what his wife said, where it was like all puppy dogs and ice cream cones until he fell in love with this, you know, seductor slut that stole him away from me. You know? Um, <laughs> but you know, again, like, you... you, you imagine things all the time you create scenarios in your head you created a scenario where you can't imagine if you can't imagine how can you imagine that you can't imagine (laughs) that's something you came up with you imagined it so don't say that it makes no sense to me again if it's a real medical condition okay but i've seen people say that shit doesn't apply to me well i mean somehow people you know imagine you know how they're to make some food or whatever write a letter or yeah whatever it is or 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 you know wrap a present it's like oh okay well you're like oh i i, I think i imagine that this wrapping paper would look cool on this present yeah I, I, this would be a pretty ribbon oh okay great I, I i did it you know like hey maybe maybe yes maybe you feel like you can't visualize it fully but at the same time, in some level, there's there's something going on. So, so it's happened to whatever it is that's going on. And you could make, there's so much technology now. Like, I see Pinterest boards. Mm. Like, my wife, like, with, with the nursery and stuff, it was like, okay, here are my colors. And then she feeds it into something, and then it sends her stuff, like, every crib in white or this, or curtains with gold and pink. or And, like, she just starts making a color board. Uh, inspiration board, all that. And then she starts picking out the stuff she wants and puts it together. And it's like, literally, oh, that's what the room will look like. That's pretty great. So she had no idea what it was going to end up looking like. She just went and got inspiration from things, but kept it in front of her visually. Mm -hmm. And then looked at things and was like, I like this. I don't like this. I want this. I don't want this. Scrap this. Only focus on this. And then it comes to reality. There's lots of ways to get around this stuff. And again, everybody can do it. You don't have to be a genius either. I find smart people really struggle with it. I've had a couple of clients who were less intelligent, like, and I'm not saying anything bad. I'm saying like some of my clients are doctors, lawyers, things like that with higher levels of education and guys and girls who didn't go to college. And those people kick ass with it. And the doctor and lawyer is like, well, I kind of got there and then they sabotage them. It's crazy. Yep. Yeah, because they're they're double minded, or they overthink yeah. it, or they think like, wow, I don't know, this doesn't quite make sense logically, or they try to, you know, yeah. logic their way out of it. It has to be simple. Yeah. It has to be simple because that would mean dumb people were fucked, and God doesn't like dumb people, but God created people dumb, <laughs> right? Like that's like you're smarter than this person, but like for a reason. We don't know. Maybe it's to show, like, tell you how smart you are because you're like that guy's an idiot, or that guy's like I need well, to go back to school because that guy's really smart. You know, but it would prove God has favorites and he doesn't. Yeah. And I think, too, also, too, it's like, yeah, there are certain types of intelligence, obviously, which are are really like important for certain things. And that's why those people become doctors and lawyers and engineers and stuff. But at the same time, there's also is a certain um, yeah, intelligence, which, which a lot of people do have, which is of a different order. 
and and and, and I mean the fact that I mean any any that anyone can speak at all is kind of a is kind of an amazing thing when you think about like yeah. other animals that can't do it. But also all the all the stuff we do just sort of without even thinking about it in terms of you know just recognizing people in a photo and and, and things like that. Those are actually kind of amazing things which people are only yeah. now starting to figure out how to get computers to do. So which we're called off logic. So there's there's a type of you know non logical intelligence which is out there. Um, oh, so, street smarts. I mean, we live yeah, exactly. in New York, so we know. Like, we have seen the card hustler outthink and out hustle the PhD, right? That guy's book smart, but he has no common sense. The street guy has no book smarts, but he has a ton of common sense and he knows, you know, how to be slick. You know, I think that's why uh, with my kids, it's great because they get the benefit of like super smart mom, like, you know, top of her class, and then dad got into a great school but was dumb and dropped out <laughs> like right he's like i can't play football anymore i'm out of here and, you know but like became like street smart you know but i don't want them to be too street smart because street smart people also sometimes feel sorry for themselves and try to take the easy way out and that's not who i want my right. kids to be i want them to have sometimes a people cut code. corners yeah they're not naive and they don't get hustled but they're also a good person and they don't cut corners you know they see that digging in and trusting him. It's not about doing hard work. It's about believing in God. You don't have to do a lot of hard work. That's what God's been trying to tell you this whole time. Stop with the hard work. Believe in me and everything gets easy. Need money? Ask me for it. I'm the dad who always has a full bank account and says yes. <laughs> the trick is you got to believe. You know, and enough with this, like money will just show up in your account shit. You're never really going to believe that. If you did, it would happen. But most of you are not going to believe that you're going to wake up and the bank fucked up and put 20 million in your account. So it's going to come from yeah, somewhere. It's, it's, but don't worry about where. Just like somebody will pay me for something. I'm good at a bunch of shit. You know? Yep. Somebody will figure that out and pay me to do something. Stop looking for these crazy dramatic things. Because we've even seen people on Reddit like, I woke up with 25,000 extra dollars, but then I got worried the bank was going to take it. But then I read this law that said I get to keep it. And they're like, I got to keep it. But some are like, the bank just took it back and now I have nothing again. But read what <laughs> they said. They said they thought that's what was going to happen. That's what they yep. assumed was going to happen. So it did. Right. Meanwhile, the other guy's like, fuck this. I'll find a loophole and keep that shit. And he was smart. He took all the money out anyway. He's like, you ain't getting it back now. <laughs> you know? Right. Come talk to me. Unless the law is coming. <laughs> but if the law is not coming, I don't see you getting that money back. Sorry, Charlie. You know, and he's like, and I'll, I'll figure out how to keep it. And he does. But again, like that stuff is ridiculous. Just believe you'll get a great job. Somebody will pay whatever, or you'll you'll figure out what you're really good at, and somehow the clients will find you. I still don't advertise. I mean, we do this podcast, but we don't really promote it. We just tell you guys when it's landing. I don't have a website. I don't have anything because yep. I'm like, oh, whenever I want clients, I just say how many I want, how much money I want. One of the things I do, I don't even say anymore, like money comes to me quickly, easily, blah, 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 blah. I just go, I got set them out in the bank. Like I told you the other day, I wanted $100,000 mm -hmm. in the bank, physical cash. And all I kept saying was I have $100,000 in the bank now. And then when I got it, I was like, okay, now I want 200,000 and 300. And I was like, fuck this. Why am I like, I want this much in the bank now. Fuck going 100,000 at a time. I've done that. Let's see if I can go 300,000 at a time, you know? And before you know it, you got a lot of money. And then what happens is it loses its value, not to the world, but to you. A hundred dollars used to be a lot of money. You're definitely not worried about it. Dollars. Definitely not. Yeah, a thousand dollars. Definitely was a not lot worried about it anymore. Yeah. Now I'm like, I don't give a shit. I'll pay a thousand dollars. I don't care. You know, but it's because now it's not a lot of money to me. And that was great advice from our friend John again. Get something. So you stop worrying about money to that extent and you see some relief. So it also shows you there is hope and you might be able to get out of this and build on that, you know, but complaining all day is just going to keep you in that situation. And I'm Absolutely. sorry, but until you take accountability for it all, you don't get that experience of being free going, oh, shit, if I created it, all I got to do is uncreate it now. If all I did was say it to make it happen, all I got to do is say it to make it go away and get this new thing I want. So, okay, we're going to go.
as always, guys, we love you. We're intending that what you needed to hear you heard tonight and that you guys get going with this. Please, any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Any success stories, we'd love to hear. You know, I'll be honest with you guys. I want more activity in the comment section. I want people sharing stuff. We, you know, we, we take time. Especially to do this. success stories. Yeah. And we, we I feel like there aren't enough success you. stories in the comments. Yeah. Am I, am yeah, I well, wrong? Go, go, go to the Neville Gossip sub. We got some really good ones there. We don't yes, get the Neville Gossip sub. They're great. <laughs> they're great. They're great yeah. stories there. Right. I, I love, I love getting those. And I feel really, I really yeah. appreciate you guys who have posted there because that's great. That's really uh, encouraged me. I mean, even honestly, I told Brian just even just when I got one of them, it just makes all the time we spent on this worthwhile yeah. just seeing just that one. But um, guys, we'd love to see more stories in the YouTube yeah. comments, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well. We're getting a lot of people now who I didn't even coach with success stories. I love that. Yes, that's I awesome. I love that. So it, it, it makes it all worthwhile for us. But like, let us hear it, too. We don't need it, but we love hearing it. And we love telling you guys, hey, great job. And I think I it'll encourage other people too, person. Yeah. right? Because then other people will to just hear. And I also, I want, you know what, I too, I just want to also mention, remember too, everybody's story is different, right? Everybody has a different path. God has a different story for them. So don't compare yourself to others. But I do want you guys to be encouraged and be like, oh, yeah, God's going to show up for this guy in a different way. Like God's showing up for me and Brian in very different ways, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, and we've gone through very different challenges in our lives as well. So just be be encouraged by that, too. But the thing that was also similar was we both finally believed. Oh, absolutely. There's a similar and trusted that. God. Yeah. yeah, we absolutely. trusted the process that God was taking us the special way for us to make it work. Yeah. So you got to do this thing where you're like, I can't compare myself to others, but I got to do this one part that everybody that gets there does, which is believe. Absolutely. And it was funny, yeah. too, because I was just being reminded about that, how. Book of John, you read the book of John. That's a great, great book to remind people to read because what does he talk about all, all the time? He just talks about, I just believe. Um, mm -hmm. So just read the book of John and also read one John, um, like I was telling yeah, you. Yeah, if guys, Neville's too great. complicated for you and you need a break from it, go read the Bible. Yeah. It's not as complicated. And nowadays with all these apps, you can take the yees and the yays and the for he saith and all that out of there. And it'll be like, basically, God said, like, knock it the fuck off and believe and just get it done. <laughs> yeah, there are all sorts of new versions. Just be like, all right, you're being dumb. Okay, <laughs> we'll take out the they and the die and all that. But like, God just basically said, like, stop doing this, stupid. There's even like <laughs> the amplified. Believe. There's even, yeah, <laughs> there's even the amplified version where they like just really like spell it out for you. Yeah, <laughs> they, it like, really is. Try to really like make it clear. And then some of Very these uh, versions, <laughs> like the, the, some of these versions, they have like audio books available. Of all these, mm -hmm. so you can just you can be driving around your car or running errands or whatever, and you can you can listen to this stuff. So it's great. And yeah. stop listening to the bullshit stuff. The reason why yes. people Negativity. were able to focus on this stuff when Neville's time is because they didn't have uh, reality shows and TV and the internet and TikTok and Instagram and all that to distract them. If you're sitting down and you're spending, <laughs> you can spend three hours watching TikTok videos. You can spend at least half of that reading Neville. Well, I guess I, I guess the Neville's you, time. I guess Neville's, Neville's time, book is going to help you. The were, Bible is going to help you more than TikTok. I guess the Neville's time. They were either uh, if they weren't like a Neville Goddard lecture. I guess I guess I guess the one temptation would be the newspaper. But otherwise, they're just like, oh, yeah. what am I doing? It's like, oh, I guess I'm going to look around outside and like look at all these flowers and trees and <laughs> the blue sky. The like, National Enquirer because I'm not like at the, the lecture. Original, I, can't, I, I can't watch TikTok yeah. right now. <laughs> it was the original fake news that we heard about. Like, remember, like woman gives birth to bat baby bitten by snake. Children come out with uh, snake like skin. It was like the National Enquirer, but you knew it was bullshit. But nowadays, like with all the clickbait stuff, it's like, is that real? I'm going to click on it. And then you fall down this rabbit hole. And you're like, shit, the hour I had to read, I just read about how Larry Bird's wife is not attractive. <laughs> but she was okay looking. She wasn't hideous. That ad lied to me. It didn't even take me to that fucking article. <laughs> you know? Like, you guys waste your time with stupid shit. I'm guilty of it. I did it, too. I'd be like, I'm going to sit down and read this weekend. And then I'd be like, oh, that new show's on Netflix. I'm going to binge it. <laughs> or I watched YouTube videos where, like, people were like, ancient secret scroll discovered how dude and why would they call you right 
You're the guy who like takes a dump on the toilet with his MacBook and you've uncovered ancient secret scrolls. You've deciphered the but things people have studied for millions of years, scholars, people way smarter than you with all. And you're the guy who's like, oh, I discovered it. They they all missed it. And then they sent it to me and we're like, hey, you fit you can figure this out. I hate those videos or moon rituals or like the moon, all that shit has nothing to do with this stuff. Turning counterclockwise, making smoke, shit, putting shit under your pillow. It's, it only works because you believed it worked. Because there are going to be people like, well, I did stick something on my Yes, but before you did that, you believed it would work, and that's why it worked. It's all still the Bible. It's all still Neville. It's all still belief. Any technique will work if you believe it works. But the reason you do techniques is to help you believe. So if the technique doesn't make you believe, get rid of it. But if you believe the technique, it doesn't matter what you do, it'll work. You know, so take a break from all that shit. Read the Bible. Read John like Anders is talking about. Read Neville. Yeah. And shut everything off and make your brain get quiet. Yeah. Say I am for like a half hour, 15 minutes in your head and then read. And say I intend to read exactly what I need to hear, exactly Amen. what I need to learn. Amen. And watch out, God's like, oh, I got a bunch of stuff for you, bud. Here we go. You're <laughs> he will highlight some things for you, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, you'll, you'll be like, I can't read this fast enough. Intend <laughs> to enjoy what you read and watch how you love reading all of a sudden. All right, like, guys, oh, I, so, I read this like years ago. I, I, came, I, I don't remember seeing any yeah. stuff here. Yes, because God will show it to you. <laughs> oh, my so. God. Once I learned this stuff, there were like movies I watched. And I was like, oh, my God, they were brilliant. I missed <laughs> all this. I remember I didn't get <laughs> I Heart Huckabees. And everybody loved I Heart Huckabees. And I was like, yeah, yeah, me too, right? It's brilliant. I was like, oh, what the fuck this movie is about? <laughs> but then I got it later. And I was like, oh, my God, that movie was brilliant. They were right. They were just way smarter than me and saw that shit. Man, you learned. You knew that at 23? Good Lord. You know, my dumb ass learned it in my 40s, <clears throat> but I was like, but I know it. So just trust, believe, and you won't go wrong. He really is a parent that loves you unconditionally, and we're not used to unconditional love. But if you learn mm -hmm. how to accept it, you can learn how to give it. And that's also the mm -hmm. secret to getting your person back hired because you say to the other person now, I'm whole. I'm one with God. I get all of that from God. So I no longer put any conditions on you. And I'm just telling you, you love me however you want. It's perfect. And they go, wait a minute. No one's ever said that to me. No one's ever said that to me. I'm not going anywhere now. I've, I've been wanting this my whole life. But then they calm the fuck down and they take their conditions off too. Because they feel how great it feels for them to have them off. So they want to give you, you that gift. And then they start taking care of themselves. And then you got unconditional love. And you got it here. It's all designed to show you unconditional love. That's the whole reason we're here, everything. The reason you're able to create, manifest, it's all to show you the way to unconditional love and how to keep it in your life always. It's why suddenly some of you guys don't care about your jobs anymore when you when your heart's broken or other things, right? Because you're like, yeah. it's like if you found out you were dying, you'd be like, I don't really give a shit about my material possessions. I don't really give a shit about going to work anymore. What I care about is spending my last days with everyone I love. You get a real clarity, like what's really important. And we forget it because we're like, oh, everybody else has this nice furniture and I want that at my house. And I, like, I think fight club talks with it, right? They're like, and you're going to work just to struggle to get the new Ikea table. And then you get it and you take it out of the box and you're like, why is this thing got a million fucking pieces? And it doesn't make you happy because it doesn't ever turn out the way it did in the catalog. Your right. shit is wobbly and stuff. Right. And you worked so hard to get a wobbly wonky table. You could have been pursuing pure things things of value like you were talking about right go deeper yep go deeper it's great that you have the job you want and and the relationship but like what does that relationship really look like you're just saying like well i'm loved and that's all surface shit that's codependent anyway it's not even love mm -hmm. what you love is how they make you feel not love them 
when it's deeper, you want to give them the world and don't ask for anything in return. They want to give you the world and don't ask for anything in return. Yeah, and they don't really them. care about it. Yeah, you just value them. And you just want to be there for them and love them and be a source of comfort and love and all that. I'm telling you guys, it's fucking amazing. And it all starts with who do you want to be and going deep with that. No surface level bullshit. I'm really glad you brought that up tonight. Like, as you were saying it, I was like, oh, thank God. I'm so glad he's putting this on there because I would like to have said I wanted to say that, but like, I kind of forgot about it. And God was like, there's somebody that needs to hear this. So I'm going to make sure Anders says it now. That's why I love having Anders on this podcast too. I'm the excitable one. He's the calm, collected one. I'm the guy that gets you hyped <laughs> up about God. He's the guy that tells you in more detail about God. He shared it with me. So now I'm hyper and, you know, like that too. And I like to think that, you know, while Anders doesn't jump up and down like I do all the time, he's an excited guy. <laughs> I have seen him really happy <laughs> and excited in the past. It's just, you know, he he's better at controlling it than me. So, but uh, all right, guys, we love you again. Hopefully you got everything you needed and more here. We got 10 other episodes that we recorded before this. And start thinking about your questions because at the fifth episode, we do a take five or we take five minutes time out to answer your questions on the stuff we've talked about. And uh, we're going to hopefully do these as close together as possible. But right now with some of them, we're trying to schedule guests, previous clients to have conversations and stuff with so you can hear from them what they went through when they studied all this stuff. And I can share the insight I had with what I felt from them and they can tell you what they felt from me and then some of the stuff I've even talked to Anders about and he has given me some information and stuff too with clients so it's going to be great you're going to hear all of that and then you know we'll answer your questions we'll try to come up with you know the one thing I trust is that God always kind of tells us what to talk about next and gives us a lot of stuff to say you know to help you guys out so uh but as always thank you so much for joining us tonight and uh we just wish you all the best okay Take care, guys. We love you. Absolutely. Love you guys. Really excited about all this. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.